hey guys welcome back to stm32 coding for everyone so in this tutorial i'm going to show you how to quickly uh configure your stm32 microcontroller or your nuclear board to be able to handle an external interrupt so well what is an external interrupt or what is an interrupt like right now i'm uh, speaking to you i'm recording this tutorial my son or my daughter might decide to walk into the room and that will be an interruption now i will have to find a way to handle that interrupt without losing the focus to what i'm doing so i will make a hand gesture signaling that uh, my son or my daughter must move back outside without disrupting what i'm doing and once that's done i will then return to what i'm doing that basically mean i've handled that interrupt and i've returned to the process now as you can see the kernel mode here is also stating exactly the same thing so you have an external event that's occur, right? So the process was being executed. Now an external event occur, it basically disrupt the process flow. So now the kernel here is going to handle that external event by handling the interrupt. Once that's done, it leave the external interrupt handler. And once that's done, it will then leave the exception or interrupt handler function and go back into the process. As simple as that now before you can get that working you have to identify the pins and the correct configuration needed to basically make sure that this controller body is able to handle an interrupt so this is what we're going to do so now let's go ahead and do our configuration so that our body can be capable of handling an external interrupt now before we do that please if you find this tutorial useful Give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to SimTech channel. That would be highly appreciated. Now, when you look at this pinout view, you can see that there is no pin configuration done, right? Because I came ahead here and I clear all the pins out. Now, right now, we cannot generate the code. If we generate the code, we will basically generate a skeleton code without any configuration on it. And that won't be able to execute or clock our STM uh, microcontroller there. So I have to come back between these two configuration here, the RCC and SIS. First, I'll go into the RCC and I have to select on the high speed clock. I'm going to select the bypass clock source. And on the low speed clock, I'm going to select the crystal and ceramic uh, resonator. So that basically means on the external low speed clock source, I'm using that uh, crystal oscillator right there. Now you can see there are some configuration loaded. And for the system here, I have to select my debugger. So which debugger I'm using? I'm using the ST-Link, which uses the SWD, which is a serial wire debugger. So I select serial wire debugger. Now you can see I've got uh, some pin configuration that have now been loaded. Right now, the only thing that is now left here is basically to set up the pin that will be handling our external interrupt and the pin that will execute what we want to do. Okay, so now we want to trigger an external interrupt when a button is pressed, okay, which is a user button, the blue button. Okay, and we want to toggle an LED uh, when that action happens. So that basically means the interrupt handler is going to do something for us and that something is going to be to basically toggle the led so now to do that first we need to identify the pin for our external interrupt that also have the button associated to it second we need an output pin that is now going to basically execute the task during the interruption so that will be to uh, identify the pin that got led attached to it now if you want to know anything about your microcontroller your go-to option is your reference manual and when i bring the reference manual for my chip there i have to now search for the external interrupt to find out where how it is being in, uh, implemented now with your reference manual open all you have to do here is to basically search for the implementation for external interrupt or interrupt an event so that's basically what you are looking for so you can go ahead and hit the search bar and x t i short for external interrupt and you can search from that and that basically going to take you where there is uh external interrupt being uh basically uh, talked about the heading or you can come here on the bookmarks and search for interrupt and event right so if i click there on interrupt and event you basically going to see where they basically talking about the interrupt now what you're looking for is for the mapping the interrupt mapping 
okay so you got extended interrupt and event controllers this is what you're looking for okay so you come here and you look for the interrupt mapping so that will be external and internal interrupt event line mapping so here right so what you're looking at here is basically all the pins that are associated with the external interrupt so xti0 so that basically means pa0 got that function to handle an external interrupt pb0 and so forth okay the same goes with pa1 pf1 and all the way to pf15 now remember your button here is connected to pc13 okay as per the schematic uh, 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 reference of this nuclear board now if you not to show how to basically see which uh, pins your button is assigned i've got tutorial where i've basically uh explained exactly which where your leds and your buttons are basically connected now you've got the information that's basically telling you that uh you, the external interrupt here is basically attached to most of your pins on your microcontroller so now you know that your button is on pin 13 so you basically need to enable that pc 13 to basically handle the external interrupt so we're going to come here and we can see pc 13 is here so i'm going to click on it and then we're going to enable gpio external ti 13 right so i'm gonna click on it okay then it is now enabled okay so now all you have to do now is here basically is uh give it uh, a user friendly name right a user friendly name you can basically call it a uh, button interrupt so b t n interrupt so this is your button interrupt okay so that's a user friendly name now the next thing is your led so we know that our LEDs on this uh, nuclear, particular nuclear board, the LED is attached on PA5. Okay, so we're going to take PA5 here and we're going to uh, define this PA5 as an output. Not as an interrupt, as an output because that is what we're going to do when the process get interrupted. And once again, you have to give it a user-friendly name. So we're going to call this as green led underscore led okay so that's the green led that is attached on pa5 right so now you need to do one last thing so that basically is to go into your nested vector interrupt controller your nvic now your uh, nested vector interrupt controller here is basically what is handling the priorities and how the interrupt will be done the polling and all of that so you basically need to find it here. It says external line 15 to 10 interrupt. So we've got the interrupt uh, ranging in this range of 15 to 10. Now you know you are in there. PC 13 is within that bracket. So all you have to do is to enable it right there. So we basically done here. You can go ahead and generate your code here. So you just click on code generation and yes. Now you've got your code generated for you with all the configurations. You've got your system clock configuration. We're not going in there. And when you come to the MX GPIO initialization, this is basically where you've got your uh, GPIO A, where your LED is and where your button is connected for port C. The clock are enabled. Right then you've got your button interrupt pin as we uh, defined it and you also have your green led as we defined it now they are all configured here in your gpio init pin so now what you have to do is to go into your drivers here so you go to your drivers you select the stm32 hal drivers right and then you go on the source and you must look for the gpio c because you've got your interrupt attached to a GPIO pin, right? Your general purpose input output. So you click on GPIO C. Now it's going to open that source file for you. Now you look into the outline here. What you are looking for is the external interrupt handler function. Now you've got two functions here. There is a IRQ handler and there is a callback, right? Now when you click on either one of them, you're going to see them here. Now, the 
external interrupt handler basically this handle your external interrupt right when the interrupt happen it's handle it but then you've got also the external interrupt callback now this callback here is this this is where you're going to define uh, what you want to do right when the interrupt is handled okay when the interrupt is handled what you want to do you want to do something okay in our case here when the interrupt occur we want to toggle the leds okay so this is what we're going to do so now to do that i'm going to go ahead and copy uh, this code here but now there's something interesting about this particular function here you can see there is a underscore underscore weak so that basically means we can uh, declare or define this function somewhere else in our code here but if it has a weak underscore the compiler is going to basically ignore it it's not going to receive a high priority for execution but if you don't have a weak then the compiler is going to complain that you've got multiple definition of a function right so it makes sense so i'm going to copy that and then we're going to come here uh just our main function where is the main function there right just outside our main function okay and we're going to paste it here now there is a while loop we're not going to execute in anything in the while loop now this is the main process this is the main process but we want to do something outside the main process when an interruption happens so first of all uh, remember to remove the wick okay so that it does not interfere with uh, this function here now you can go ahead and place a piece of code that you want to basically run in here so we're going to call the button toggle pin we're going to call the gpio button toggle so let's go back in here so if you look here there is a hal gpio toggle pin this function here right so we're gonna call that function so let's go ahead and say h a l right underscore gpio now the toggle is going to show up here toggle gpio pin now we need to pass uh, the information of where our led is attached on pa5 into this function so that you can toggle it for us when an interrupt happen now we know that we gave it a user friendly name so for the green led so you have to select a green led pin okay so this is a green led pin that we need and the other one is a green underscore led gpio port okay so let's first take that one so you have to pass that one in here right the second one is going to be the green led gpio port so that's what's being initialized there so you're going to now pass it in here right now from here you can go ahead and basically compile your code if all is well this code should be able to compile so i'm going to go ahead and build this code right the code is done building and there is no problem our compilation went successful and i'm going to go ahead and basically run this or load this code into my microcontroller so you're going to observe the debugger is going to switch on and that's going to basically start loading as you can see successfully load the code now our code is now fully loaded so now when i click on the blue button we should be able to see the led come on that basically means there is an interrupt and a toggle function here must be called okay so the toggle function is going to be called in our callback here when an external interrupt happen so let me just dim the light in here so we can see clearly okay so i hit the blue the blue button there we go there was an interrupt and an led just came on now it's going to stay on because it's a toggle function it will only going to go off next time there is another interrupt so i'm going to hit again the button there is another interrupt and it went off but now you can see it went off quickly and came back that because of the debounce right the debounce is happening i'm not handling that so i hit then it goes off right toggle comes on next time there is an interrupt it will then go off so that basically mean the, you've got something happening now here you can basically do anything with uh, with this action 
So you are able to turn on an LED based on interrupt. You can run a motor. You can turn on a generator. You can do anything once you are able to do that. So that is it, guys, for this tutorial. I hope you find it useful. Please don't forget to subscribe to SimTech channel and give this tutorial a thumbs up so that more people can see it. Until next time, cheers.